Hello and welcome, Space and Mobility family. Uh, if you're watching this, you might be watching the recording of the live. Um, so make sure you guys join in live if you can. Today, we are talking all about the rock mat. We're talking about proprioception, why it's going to be beneficial to use. We've got the rock mat XL. So many things to dive in today. Really quickly, I do want to announce, if you guys have questions, we'll be doing a Q&A at the end. So don't forget to comment so that way we can answer the questions that you guys might have. We're going to really dive in again. If you're just joining, we're talking all about the rock mat proprioception, its benefits, and why at Space Mobility we use it. My name is Mitch Harbaugh. I'm excited to be joined with you guys here today. So the rock mat XL and just the rock mat in general, let's dive in. When it comes to the rock mat, what I've got here behind me, proprioception is kind of like a superpower for us. It's our ability to tell where we're going in space and where our body is at. So when we have better proprioception, how I put pressure into the floor when I squat, when I deadlift, when I run, what muscles I'm firing up the leg into my torso, all of that's impacted by our proprioception. So we can think when we have something like my prop shoe here that takes away proprioception because it's so thick on the bottom, I lose my ability to tell where I am in space and what muscles I might be firing up the chain. I'm sure if you guys have tried potentially deadlifting or squatting with no shoes on versus cushion shoes on, it feels pretty different. So that's important for us to be aware of. And the reason why we love implementing the rock mat, and we're going to get into some exercises in a moment as we talk more about proprioception, it's important for us to realize that the rock mat and different textured services are going to help wake up these 200,000 plus nerve endings that we have in our feet. So that way we can better move and improve our body awareness. So let's talk a little bit more about the rock mat. Let's stand on it and let's get going from there. Again, if you have any questions, please comment below. At the end, after our live, we'll be doing a giveaway. If you'd like to potentially get a chance to win a rock mat XL, go ahead and comment spacer mobility as you go okay so again comment space mobility to enter for your chance to win rock mat so when i'm standing on the rock mat i initially prefer for me in the morning i usually do it when i have coffee or later in the day i stand on it when i am cooking food and it's important that we just kind of start by just being able to shift our weight as we're standing on the rock mat again this is kind of like the very beginning opportunity for me to remove the cushion from my feet if i wear shoes that have a little bit more of an elevation or a cushion and it's my chance to really feel the different textured pieces and bottom of my feet. You might not know this, but we actually have three arches on the bottom of the foot. And it's important that I'm able to be aware of those different arches and shifting weight to the outside, to the inside, shifting weight forward and shifting weight backwards. This is going to be really important to improve our body awareness. Again, that's really the main key piece that we're talking about today, especially when we talk about bringing the outside in, like with our Rock Mat XL. Standing on different textured surfaces, whether it be a rock mat, some cobblestones, maybe it's on a hard surface floor, maybe it's on wood, maybe we're hiking barefoot, whatever it is, all of that is going to change the way that I feel my body moving because it's providing more feedback. And then because I'm getting more feedback, I can make better adjustments. It's kind of like my body's trying to make a prediction of when I'm walking, what muscles should I fire? And because I am now better used to moving on something like a rock mat and I'm more aware of what is happening, that feedback loop is giving me a better opportunity to then fire the right muscles and walk correctly. Again, if you're just joining us, go ahead and comment spacer mobility below for your chance to win at the end when we do a giveaway and go ahead and comment questions or hold your questions to the end. So now again, when we're talking about the rock mat, it's going to be a really great thing to stand on and shift around. From there, if we want to progress, because again, when you see athletes using the rock mat, or maybe when you've used the rock mat, you probably noticed it's a little bit uncomfortable at first. So the easiest way to begin is just by standing on it, shifting around and rocking your weight. And then from there, we can get into things like I can just hold a squat on it and just hang out in the bottom. Okay, again, this is one of my favorite things to do. For me, for example, what I noticed because of the rock mat is I feel a lot of my weight shifting back into my heels that I normally don't notice when I have shoes on. Even when I'm barefoot, it's a little bit more difficult to tell, but because I have so much different pressure points on the bottom of my feet, it's making me more aware. And so when I'm able to shift forward and shift back and then kind of readjust, now my squat position feels a lot stronger. I have to lean a little bit more forward, but I feel okay in that position. And it just gives me a little bit more feedback on, okay, this is what's happening. So again, the rock mat, when we think about some of its key benefits, let's talk about for a moment. I'd mentioned that body awareness and proprioception. So it is going to give you a lot better feedback 
on what's happening and where it's happening. So in the squat example that I just did, I noticed more often that I was actually shifting back into my heels. That was causing me to lean backwards. I love that you're talking about toe spacer socks having huge improvement on your foot tightness. Yes, socks can tighten the feet, guys, too. So it's important that we splay them toes, not only with toe spacers, but also some socks as well. Um, so again, talking a little bit more about that benefit, yes, it's going to give us better feedback, but then it also gives us the opportunity to explore what happens from there. So for example, I have the rock mat. I noticed that my weight shifted back. When I fixed that weight shift because of the feedback from the rock mat, I was then able to be aware that, hey, my hip flexors lit up, my core turned on, but I had to kind of round. So then it tells me, okay, maybe in the squat, my mid and upper back is a little bit weak and I'm not able to have necessarily maybe some as strong hip flexors as I'm going through. So is that, uh, this is not the rock mat XL that I'm standing on. So the rock mat XL is much larger. Excuse me. Um, so again, as I go through, I was given that feedback. I squatted, my weight was backwards, I adjusted, my foot felt better, but I still felt like I was rounded. So now the rock mat has given the, me the ability to think about, okay, now what I want to work on is begin trying to adjust my foot so that I feel comfortable in the rock mat and then lift my chest as much as I can, trying to fire the abdomen running through to the upper back, which is going to be really important for movements like squatting and deadlifting. I can also then progress to maybe some more dynamic movements on the rock mat as well. From there, what I would do is just simply start from shifting and squatting to now I can get a little bit more dynamic. Maybe I'm just kind of jumping in place. I'm jumping kind of side to side laterally, or I'm jumping up and down as well. It could be single leg, okay, alternating. But the point is I'm being aware of how that pressure is impacting my foot. You'll see a lot when myself or when other people use the rock mat, it's again, it's a feedback game here and we're getting lots of improvement from the rock mat. So the benefits that we've talked about so far before I get back into the dynamic movement is it's giving us feedback. We're gaining a significant better ability to adjust in the moment. And then we're also getting better ability to then get feedback on. I adjusted my position. What now is maybe that limiting factor I was aware of? Separate from that, as we're talking about from movement based, just in general, earlier I had mentioned I love standing on my rock mat in the morning when I make coffee and in the evening when I cook dinner. And the reason why I enjoy that is because I'm getting this feedback, it allows me to start to relax, almost like I'm doing a body scan, like I'm trying to relax, um, you know, like I'm doing a yoga nidra meditation, but standing in this case. And what's so great about that, again, if you're just joining, comment space or mobility for your chance at the end to win a rock mat XL. When I use this as a form of like body relaxation technique, when I'm standing cooking dinner or when I'm standing making coffee, I might be overextended. And I feel a lot of pressure in my back and that feels uncomfortable. So what the rock mat allows me to do is it begins to let me relax my knees. Maybe I start to sway a little bit. I start to notice that my knees were locked and not only was my lower back overextended, but now my knees bend and I can tuck my pelvis a little bit more gently. I can take a breath in. I can exhale and I can relax my shoulders and all of this is happening because of the feedback from my feet. Right again, prop shoe coming out. When I wear something that has a significant cushion, whether it's a cushion with a toe spring or a heel elevation, whatever it is, I lose that opportunity for feedback. So I lose that opportunity to make adjustments and improve. So I'm here, I'm standing on my rock mat. I'm being able to shift my weight. I'm making my coffee. I'm cooking dinner and I'm beginning to relax, my knees aren't so locked. So now all of a sudden my hamstrings are starting to fire a little bit. My lower back is starting to relax as my pelvis tucks under more neutral from an anterior tilt to a little bit more of a neutral or even posterior tilt. Maybe I notice now, or at least this happens to me, when I'm cooking dinner, my forward head position is really bad. And when I'm in that forward head position like this, I start to feel my neck kind of crane, my neck gets tight, my traps get tight, and that allows me to then pull my chin back. And again, it's all because of what I'm noticing at my feet because I'm so much more aware when I adjust my head, I feel my weight shift in my feet. The pressure of what's going on with my feet is totally different. It's not the same as if I was standing not on a rack mat and it's even worse if I was standing in that prop shoe that I showed earlier that has that significant heel cushion, okay? So it's important that I'm able to do that. Again, save your questions for the end if you guys have any. I'm going to say, hey, live Q&A section here, and I'll go through and I'll read what you guys are typing. And again, if you're just joining in, go ahead and comment space or mobility. We'll announce it after the live for your opportunity to win a Rock Mat XL. So again, recap some of the things that we've talked about. It improves my awareness, that feedback loop of, okay, I'm getting more feedback so I can make an adjustment, both for performance-based and for relaxation-based. 
And then as I start to get more dynamic, it's just increasing the challenge from static, just standing, swaying, or squatting and holding a squat, to now I'm jumping, I'm standing single leg, and I can go from there. If we relate it to the little bit of the foot specific mechanics, one of my favorite things is, let's say for example, your feet are really getting tight when you jump rope, when you double under, when you're running, when you're jogging, when you're box jumping, when you're lifting, your foot cramps, it doesn't feel great, maybe you're starting to get some plantar fasciitis pain, some Achilles tendonitis, your calves are blowing up, you have shin splints. This is like magic for you guys right here. And the reason why it's magic for you guys is because when I just do something as simple as a both feet or single leg calf raise on the rock mat, I will immediately be aware of where my weight is shifting and how I'm applying that pressure to the ball of my foot. Am I more pushing through the big toe, the outside of the foot? Is my heel rolling to the outside and I'm avoid loading that plantar fascia? Maybe I have a little bit of assistance and when I do a single leg calf raise, it's the same thing. So you guys can see when I do that, I start to get feedback on how I'm applying pressure through the foot, how that's impacting up the chain of my torso. So even though we're standing on something, it's impacting everything up the chain because it's getting better communication to the rest of my body. Right, I'd mentioned my knee position being not as locked. I'd mentioned my back not being so anterior tilted. And I'd mentioned my head position. So now all of a sudden we're impacting the muscles that we're firing, both to relax and to perform. And I'm also impacting my standing posture. So this is gonna impact how I walk, how I jog, how I run, how I jump rope, whatever I might be as I'm moving through space. So then just to kind of bring it all back and talk about it and then give you guys an opportunity here as we go through a Q&A, is gonna be the rock mat has a really big opportunity to help me relax and recover. When they looked at different studies of people walking on textured surfaces like this, cobblestones, it was able to greatly de-stress. In elderly groups, they were able to stand up more quickly with better balance. They were able to have increased energy and they were actually through that relaxation able to lower their blood pressure. So we start to get into some physiological benefits here separate from a better mind-body connection. And then it's going to improve my ability to feel what I'm firing up the chain from the foot all the way up. And that's to perform and to relax. So this wonderful thing called the Rock Mat and what we're talking about, the Rock Mat XL, is I'm getting so much more ability to be aware of how I'm moving through space. And that's going to be a massive difference. Okay. So what I want you guys to be able to dive in now is let's talk about any specific questions that you guys have. Again, if you have any uh, or if you're interested in joining in on our giveaway, go ahead and comment Spacer Mobility below, and you guys will be able to win an opportunity after the live is over to earn a Rockmat XL. I'm just pulling up to see if we have any questions on here. So again, go ahead and comment any questions that you guys might have. Going to get toe spacers as we speak. I love it. Uh, let's see. Can't wait until like, you get mine. I know. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing what's coming with the toe spacers. So... Again, I'm just going to kind of continue to talk about the amazing benefits of the rock mat until some more questions and comments come in as I scroll through. He cooks dinner. <laughs> Sorry, I do have a ring. Um, let's see here, space for mobility. So again, is that the rock mat XL? No, I'm standing on a different rock mat. I'm standing on the smaller one, but the rock mat XL is pretty amazing. Skateboarding accident, been sore for five weeks. So when there's a trauma to the body, so let's say I'm jumping rope and my foot really cramps up and blows up or I fall and my foot twists, my knee hits, right? What exercises are best to improve foot fascia tightness, right? And I, I'm glad that, again, you guys love your toe spacers. So an important thing to consider when we're talking about my foot is really tight, whether just tight in general, or I have an injury, it's all about a feedback piece, right? So whether I have big toe pain, whether I have foot tightness, whether I've just gotten injured, the way that the rock mat both the normal and the XL size one are going to help you is it's going to allow you to begin muscles that are too tight. We're going to begin to relax. So let's talk specifically about the foot and up the chain. When I'm standing here on the rock mat, I might be curling my toes into the mat. That is going to tighten the tissue on the bottom of my foot. It's going to make my foot feel really stiff, right? If I'm standing and my toe is pointed in my big toe, and I'm starting to get kind of like that pain at the first part of my big toe here and it's pointed in, that's gonna cause a lot of constant tension on the bottom of my foot that wearing a cushioned heel is going to make worse. So what the rock mat is gonna allow me to do is, and I would suggest you try this as well, I'm gonna stand on the mat, I'm gonna take a deep breath in, I'm gonna relax, exhale and then try and relax the feet first. Try and relax my toes, I'm gonna breathe in again, and then I'm gonna relax my feet and my knees. 
and then I'm going to breathe in one more time. And then I'm going to relax and let my pelvis kind of tuck under. And then once I get that set, then I'll just start to almost like I'm trying to keep my foot as relaxed as possible. And like I'm tiptoeing, I'm just going to start to walk side to side in, in place on the rock mat, right? So what this is doing is gently massaging the bottom of my foot. Separate from the rock mat, if I am wearing cushioned footwear, right? And this is just a little fun fact to pair on with the rock mat. Take a look at your shoe. If it has a toe spring, as I continue to walk, where the front of the shoe lifts, if it has a heel elevation, and if it is cushioned, that is applying and stretching the fascia on the bottom of the foot. If it has an arch support as well, think about an arch in nature. An arch is strongest when we apply pressure from the top down, and an arch is weakest when we apply pressure from the bottom up. So if I am not massaging the foot, learning how to relax my nervous system and talk to my feet and relax my feet and tissue so that way I can better move each piece individually and connectively as a functional piece. And if I'm wearing a shoe that's restricting my movement, then what's going to end up happening is I'm going to compensate. Okay? So I'm applying, making my arch weaker. I'm overstretching the tissue and because I have a heel elevation, I'm forward in my feet. So now my fascia is stretched and I'm flexing it. So we're putting it at its end ranges, and that's causing so much tightness. And as it relates to the question that someone asked earlier around the big toe, if my big toe is pulled in and all of that, which is technically a dislocation of the big toe, that's what a bunion is, that's what's going to cause all that pain. So the rock mat, among some of the other tools that we have, like a toe space or an eight ball, are going to help because I just need to think of this as I'm just improving feedback to relax or activate muscles, and I'm trying to learn how to splay my foot. You can see on the rock mat here, I can kind of wedge my big toe in between two of the pieces on the rock mat. And then I can start to roll out from there and then just push my toes gently into the ground without like kind of clawing at the ground. So it's important that I'm able to do this because now I'm learning how to fire deep intrinsic foot and muscles. My joints are realigning maybe if I'm wearing toe spacers as I do this. And that's going to benefit me, one, for the big toe. And then also as that question related earlier for the tightness in the foot. So I'm going to come back up now and I'm going to look through because I'm seeing a little bit more questions pop up. Again, if you guys are interested in earning a chance to win a Rock Mat XL. Go ahead and comment space and mobility below. Plantar fasciitis. What do you do for improving? PT two to three days a week, 10 weeks, much improved, but pain. Uh, but pain is gone. Recommend a practitioner to learn. Thanks for explaining proprioception piece. Didn't realize how much the bottom of the feet relate to my posture. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Unbelievable how much the feet relate to it. Um, extreme tightness in the arches, super painful when you get massages to work. I like to think of it like this. When it comes to the foot being tight, the foot being painful, um, and you know having plantar fasciitis, again, let's take a look up close at a shoe since a lot of what we're talking about and what people are commenting questions on relates to the feet. Um, and this relates to the question earlier, hey, it impacts my posture, here's proprioception, here's my arch, it's, it's tight, it's painful, my plantar fasciitis is killing me. Um, don't forget to comment toe spacer for your chance to win. If I have this shoe, right, and I know this is not a normal workout shoe, but for all intents and purposes, it, it, it makes this point, right? So I have a thick cushion. So I've immediately lost my ability to be aware of what's going on on the ground, which is what the rock mat helps me with, right? So I have lost my ability for better feedback due to the thickness of the sole of my shoe. Next, there is an arch support in here, like, a, like an arch elevation. Again, talking about your plantar fascia, right? Your arch in your foot is not a bone, it's a series and layers of muscle tissue and connective tissue and there's obviously the bones of your foot, right? So an arch is a muscle that can be strengthened and developed. So everyone does have an arch, they just might have different size arches, lower arch, higher arch, whatever it is. So what I'm able to do when I stand on the rock mat and I get better proprioception is I'm able to take away some of the negative benefits that I'm gonna, or the negatives that I'm gonna get from the shoe. If I have a toe spring, sorry sneaker heads about creasing the shoe, if I have a toe spring, that is lengthening the tissue on the bottom of the foot here. If I have a heel elevation, that is also lengthening the tissue on the bottom towards the heel. And then if I have an arch support applying pressure, kind of like someone sticking their thumb into the arch of your foot all day while you're walking. And then on top of that, because I have that heel, my weight is shifted forward. And so now my calf is flexing and is on and my toes are curling. I am literally lengthening as long as I can and then contracting all of that tissue on the bottom of my foot. And that is going to lead to a really tight, sensitive foot, especially if we're not standing on a rock mat or rolling on an eight ball or splaying our feet with our toe spacers. And I'm really going to have a problem because of the sensitivity. So the way that I would suggest you go about fixing this, whether it's the plantar fascia, my feet are tight, my feet are painful, I'm not sure what to do. 
And this relates to should you wear the toe sp uh, space or socks during the gym workout, right? Sled pushes, whatever it is. The general approach is it depends on where you're at, but the easiest way you can begin standing on the rock mat at home throughout your, excuse me, throughout your day. Maybe it's when you're making coffee. Maybe it's when you're cooking dinner. If you work from home, maybe you're mixing that in in your midday. So I'm standing on the rock mat. I'm starting to gain better proprioceptive awareness. If I don't have a rock mat yet and it hasn't been shipped to me yet, then I can go stand in the grass and I can stand on like gentle rocks, cobblestone, whatever you might have access to, even if it's just the grass. Then from there, as it relates to the gym, start with non-dynamic movements or slow dynamic movements. Non-dynamic movement would be a back squat, a strict press, a deadlift, a bench press, a front squat, something like that. Don't do cleans yet. Don't do snatches yet. Don't go running yet. Don't go jumping yet. And the sled push I actually really like because you can go really slow with it, right? Do a sled walk. Work on a heel-toe walk. Work on walking on the balls of your feet the whole time. If you're able to do that, whether it's in toe spacers, toe socks, and you have your rock mat with you, what you're going to do is be aware of what's happening to your foot. Uh, it's too much to dive into today, separate from just our general concept of proprioceptive awareness, but the more you're aware of what your foot is doing, what's firing in your foot, and what's limiting, like can I extend my big toe the whole way? When I push off, is my arch collapsing or am I rolling my heel to the outside? All of that due to proprioceptive awareness, that feedback, that's winning, even if you're still making progress and, and fixing things along the way. And then more importantly with that, it's changing what's firing up the chain. So you'll start to get more hamstring contraction when you need on a deadlift. You'll start to feel your abdomen engage even more when you go to do a back squat because you're aware of where your weight is shifting and your upper back is gaining strength. So it's really important that we continue to do that as we go through. Okay, is this because you're still wearing? Last question that I got for y'all. Is this benefit of still wearing cushioned shoes during workouts runs, only beneficial working out barefoot? This is still beneficial even if you wear cushioned shoes. Um, I would suggest for like running and stuff like that, there are some good companies that have a cushioned shoe, but everything else about it is, it's zero drop, it's flat, there's no arch support, it's wide toe box, so that's still beneficial. The really big thing is you guys are getting used to in implementing more barefoot movement-based stuff, and the reason why I suggested starting with um, non-dynamic movements or slow dynamic movements is because you don't want to do too much too soon too fast. It would be the equivalent of I've never worked out before and now I'm going to the gym five days a week and I'm doing the highest intensity workouts that I can Monday through Friday nonstop. You would crush yourself. And you don't want to do that. So the rock mat is great because it's a way to initially implement this kind of added supplement of like, hey, every time I stand on the rock mat, I'm improving my body awareness. I'm able to adjust my posture. I'm going from there. I'm making improvements. And that's going to make a massive difference for you guys. Okay. So let's see. Do we have any other last questions as we go through? Coming back, how many femur bone in over 30 places? God, that's terrible. Um, so... If you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to um, go ahead and comment if there's any other things that you want us to talk about, any injuries, any movements, any other pieces of equipment that you guys have questions, you want to know exercises for, things that are going on with you. Don't forget to comment below or reach out to us directly. We'd love to continue to help you improve your recovery from the ground up. That's what Space Mobility is all about. Happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Again, if you haven't had the chance to, whether you're watching this live or just after, comment Space or Mobility below for your chance to win a Rockmat XL. I'm so excited. For those of you that just joined, we are just finishing up. We're talking about the proprioception, the Rockmat XL, this amazing thing behind me. That's not the XL, but the amazing piece of equipment behind me that's going to help you with your proprioceptive awareness, changing your posture, improving your recovery, helping you relax and perform better. It's like a jack of all trades tool up in here. We're so excited that you guys were able to join us on this Instagram live. Have a great rest of your day. If you're at the Rogue Invitational, come by and say hi. Come say hello. We'll be there helping people recover from the ground up. Have a good one, y'all.